Right, hello again. This time we're going to learn the if statement or the if expression. Yes, you've heard that clearly. It's an expression in OCaml. Remember that in OCaml, as, as we said before, in OCaml, everything has a value, everything is an expression. Now, uh, again, we are assuming that you are familiar with programming languages with the if statement or the if control statement, the if construct, if else statements from, from Java, from C, from PHP, from uh, uh, other languages. In OCaml, the syntax looks like this. We have the if keyword and then boolean condition. We don't have to have the parentheses that we had before in Java or C. You can have them if you want, but they're not necessary. Then we use the then keyword instead. And remember in C or Java, uh, if it's a single statement, we don't have to have uh, a curly bracket. Otherwise, we combine things in curly brackets and then we have the expression. For the else, we just say if a condition, then expression, else, another expression. So let's have a look at the code. Enough talking. I know you are sick of my explanation. Now let's let's uh, declare two variables. For example, i equals nine and j equals uh, say ten. So if I want to declare them globally, I can have double semicolon, or I can say in, i.e., in the coming code, and I can say, for example, if i is less than j, yes, then true else false remember we said before that usually oh, I'm sorry the if statement is actually an if expression so it actually return a value now what do you what do you expect now we expect it to return true because I is actually indeed less than J as you can see now it returns a value of true in fact if we just say I less than J OCaml will autom the interpreter will automatically evaluate this to uh, Unbound, I'm sorry, yeah, unbound value i because we didn't declare i and j globally. So we just, if we just copy and paste that quickly, the double semicolon, and say i is less than j, it'll automatically evaluate to true if I say <coughs> i is less than, for example, 3, that will be evaluated to false. Now, remember in the last video when we spoke about grouping expressions, this is a good time maybe to have a look at that. So let's actually try and maybe copy paste this code in my text editor I'm using gedit g edit in what to Linux so let me just paste that here uh, the top loop when it comes to these things is a bit unfriendly so let me group some expressions here either using the opening and closing parentheses or maybe using begin begin and end so again here let's say for example let x equal 10 in in uh, x plus two. So what that what that'll do is it return the value of x plus two, which is into which is twelve. Now, if this f part returns integer, the else part must return integer. Otherwise, OCaml will not be happy. Here we can demonstrate the use of begin and end. Remember, these are equivalent. I can say here begin end or here I can ha I can have opening and closing parentheses these are equivalent and then I can say for example let um, f equals even a string s in and then just return four for example uh, notice that I don't have semicolon here isn't very necessary because we are controlling it in begin and end and opening and close parentheses and the last the very last statement usually we don't have to have um, a column <coughs> or a semicolon. By the way, column ends statements in uh, OCaml. So let me just copy and paste that. Unused variable. It's actually, that's the warning, just unused variable f, but here it actually returns 12 because i is indeed less than j, so it returns x plus 10. I'm sorry, x equals 10 and 10 plus 2 is 12 so actually this part works but I just wanted to demonstrate to demonstrate that the use of opening closing parentheses or begin and end to combine or to group expressions is equivalent notice here that we don't have to have a semicolon to end these expressions or these statements now if we want to combine multiple conditions then we can use the logical and also we can say and for example true then that 
copy and paste that that will be true again return 12 just a warning and use variable f let's use f so we can get rid of the of, of the of the uh, of the warning so let's say for example we can by the way there's a module called printf so we can borrow a printf from there so we can say print if if I still remember I can't remember the formatting so we'll leave that here we'll leave that maybe till later so we, we can use s in say for example um, okay let's make s maybe or f I'm sorry an integer so we can say here f plus 4 at least yeah so we can get rid of the warning so here I just want to demonstrate combining conditions multiple conditions with the logical and so if I copy and paste that it returns well because it's true so true and true is true because I is indeed less than j but if I say combine it with false so true and this is true this is false true and false will be false so it will return f plus 4 which is 3 plus 4 which is 7 or we can have the or the logical or and this will return what do you think so true or false is what is true it will return 12 and that's how it works if you want to have a nested if statement then no problem um, we can say inside this if for example another if statement we can say if true then 5 else 6 what do you think here so if this is true we go inside this if statement here if this if it true well this true true is true then it return 5 copy and paste that and it return 5 um, instead of saying true maybe we can say for example if say j is I'm sorry that's actually a small case if j is uh, if j is larger than i let's say then 5 l6 it remember the, it will return this value or this value so the return type will be will have to be the same integer integer and here integer again copy and paste that quickly it return 5 because j is indeed larger than i remember when we spoke about uh, the equality and equality if i say if j equals no let me declare two variables yes let's, let's say for example let uh, x equals 4 and y equals 4 so we have two variables now of the same value and now remember the uh, the equality and equality remember the single uh, equal sign or the double equal or the not equal that looks like this or and not equal that looks like this so let's say for example that x equals y so what do you think that will evaluate to It'll evaluate to true because they have exactly <coughs> the same value and again now these guys have the same value if I say x not equal y again it's false because they have exactly the same value if, if, if these were strings by the way let's say s equals string yes a string and for example u equals string so just a string of value string yes if I say s equals u it'll tell me true again you see it, they have the exact same value s not equal uh, u now why is that why do you think that's actually true because this is deep equality and this is shallow inequality I hope that makes sense this is deep and this is shallow if I say s not equal u it'll be false yes because they, they both they have exactly the same value I hope that makes sense <coughs> I hope that's making sense to you the difference between the sh the, uh, the uh, deep and the shallow equality and equality again going back to our uh, main point of this video the if statement that we, ha we have f condition if condition it has to be boolean and if, of course returns true or false then expression and then the with the else statement and then we can have a nested f as we saw before and that's how we group expression 
thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.